Um, but here you can see that when we talk about precision food safety, we're mainly talking about the use of whole genome sequencing and the interpretation of that data. And the things we can do with it, for example, are such that we can make accurate identifications of organisms. I think this is hugely important. And we've seen lots of examples of this historically where bacteria are misidentified. And that causes major problems for both companies like yourselves, but also for the regulator. The other thing you can do with this, of course, is you can decode that genome information, just like I showed you with the Mbendake example. And you can see what the genetic makeup of the strain is in terms of markers or genes that might be relevant to the protection of public health, such as antimicrobial resistance markers or virulence markers. Or if you're not interested in pathogens, you could look at other types of markers that might, for example, tell you something about how the bacteria might behave under a growing condition, such as the ones that Marianne was talking about just before lunch. Epidemiology, I think, is relatively straightforward. Tracking and tracing, hugely important. And I think the holy grail here, and, and nobody has really mentioned it yet, but the holy grail here, I think, is risk assessment at the level of the genome. So this is where we're using genetic sequences of unique bacteria to distinguish between what I call pathogens that will cause true infections in susceptible humans versus other forms of those bacteria which will not mount the same type of infection. 